No matter how supportive your partner may be about your motorcycle grease monkey lifestyle, I guarantee you there is a line to that support somewhere. And it's probably traipsing grease throughout the house. So here's a hack to kick off the list aimed at your partner in the hopes that they will at least let you finish watching this video. There's an easy fix to the stubborn motorcycle grease that doesn't even require a trip into the garage wondering which cupboard the powerful grease cleaning products are hiding in. And no, the solution is not in the knife drawer in the shape of murder. It's in the cupboard in the shape of oven cleaner. Simply give the grease a decent soaking, wait a minute and wipe it off. I would argue that motorcycle grease is cleaner and less stubborn than oven grease anyway. So there's no reason it wouldn't work even in the garage when you're in a pinch. Have you ever had a fight with your bike in public? When it decides that it doesn't want you to switch the ignition on or open the fuel cap to fill it up? You can try as much force as humanly possible. Some sweet talking. Come on, you're the best looking fuel cap I know. Just open. And eventually just the right angle and pressure points get the key to turn. What it actually needs is a bit of lubricant. WD-40 or similar liquid lubricant might work for a few days, but over time it'll just make things worse. Instead, grab a pencil, a knife, and slice off some pieces of the graphite from the pencil into the keyhole. The lead in modern pencils are graphite after all, and graphite is a dry lubricant. Use the key to get it into all the right places and it should feel a bit easier to turn. If you don't spend much time in parking garages, you should start. They're the best place for motorcycle photography, your bike sounds 10 times better in them, and they're generally slippery, making your bike feel like an utter beast struggling to gain traction. But you might try to avoid them at all costs due to these machines. The parking ticket machines. They spit a ticket at you and expect you to grab a few slippery millimeters of it with thick motorcycle gloves and somehow hang on to it all the way to a parking bay without it slipping through your clumsy fingers that are a bit preoccupied with juggling a clutch, twitchy throttle, over eager brake and steering. So next time push the button for a ticket, flip up your fuel tab cover, grab that ticket with confidence, place it over the keyhole and close the tab onto the ticket. Now your hands are free to resume the usual parking garage games because that ticket isn't going anywhere unless you manage to hit 120 kilometers an hour in a parking garage. I was recently fondling my bike when I realized that the nut on top of my steering stem was loose. So loose in fact that I could turn it with my fingers. I was in shock for three days trying to figure out how this happened. Had a month of therapy to get over the fear of what could have happened and I haven't slept in days because I'm too busy checking that every other nut and bolt is tight. Okay, that's not entirely true, but I did tighten it up properly and devised a plan to make sure that I would notice if it ever decides to do this again. I took a correction fluid pen and made a line on the top of the nut across to the steering stem. So if these two lines don't line up, I know the nut is beginning to come loose. This could be used on any bolt that you're worried about coming loose or has a bad history and can withstand a surprising amount of washes but is also easy enough to get rid of whenever you desire. Do you ever have this problem with your GoPro? I don't know what its problem is. I set it up, tighten the thumb screw as tight as possible, go for a gentle ride and I guess it's boring because the GoPro goes to sleep just as we reach exciting speeds. I'll admit it's probably speed induced wind and not a hurricane, but it's still annoying. 
Even though gloves give you an upper hand at tightening the thumb screw, prolonging the bleeding fingers, it's still not enough sometimes. But take a look down the top of one of those thumb screws and you'll see a conveniently placed Phillips screw head. So on your next gentle ride, pack a screwdriver of sorts so you can crank it extra tight and you won't have any more footage like this. Servicing your own bike is a rewarding job and means you know things are done right. But what's frustrating is having a few milliliters of oil left in the oil container because your bike only wanted 96.3% of the container. Instead of letting it sit there for months on end, waiting for the day you'll need 22 milliliters of oil, lay it on its side and cut a hole in the side of the container. You now have an inexpensive oil drain pan. Well, as inexpensive as oil is these days. But you were going to buy it anyway. Plus, you know it's exactly the right size for the amount of oil that's going to come out of your bike and has a super convenient drainage port. Loctite is awesome stuff and is a great practice to get into with important bolts and bolts that like to wander. But if you ever run out, all the bike shops are closed and there's a track day first thing tomorrow morning, see if there's any clear nail polish around the house. Simply paint a dab onto the threads and insert the bolt like you normally would. It will dry and act in a similar fashion to Loctite, preventing vibrations from loosening the bolt. It definitely doesn't have the strength ratings Loctite does, but it's good enough for one day at the track. Squashed bugs on the lens of a GoPro can instantly ruin a whole day of riding. And even if you spot it before filming, a t-shirt is usually pretty useless at removing all the bug guts and also slightly scratches the lens. The ideal solution is a soft microfiber cloth. But since we don't always carry one of these on every ride, here's a seasonal hack to be used during winter rides. If you wear a buff around your neck to stop the cold air going down your shirt, take it off and use the super soft part of it that is just like microfiber cloth. It will effectively remove bug juice and not scratch your lens like a shirt would. Sure, you'll have bug remnants around your neck for the rest of the ride, but it's a small price to pay for capturing the perfect ride. Once upon a time, I went to a fuel station where they had a material tank cover with a hole in it to stop any abusive petrol pumpers or rogue drops of petrol from getting at your precious paintwork. I was in awe of such a simple device easing my worries. However, I've never seen them again. But if you were really committed to the health of your paintwork, you could easily make your own. Grab an old bike washcloth, fold it in half twice and cut out a curved section of the cloth so that when opened up again, there will be the perfect size hole for your fuel cap. Keep it under your rear seat and whether you pump it yourself or have someone else take the fun away from you, you know your bike will be dry and scratch free. As cool as Allen keys are, they have their fair share of flaws. It's cool that they can be used in two orientations, but then in tight spaces, you don't have the required leverage to loosen tight bolt. I've also learned that pointing out their flaws to them doesn't make things any easier. You're short, you're shaped like an L, and you're a funny color. So just grab a small ring spanner, like a 10 millimeter, place the ring over the short piece of the Allen key, and use the spanner to get the much needed extra leverage. Well, there you have it. Nine bike hacks for motorcyclists and one for their partner, in the hopes that a few of these could help you out in your time of need. If you have any of your own hacks, please add them down in the comments below. And if none of these were new to you, I hope you at least got some enjoyment out of the video. Hit the like button if you want to see more hack videos and I'll see you on the next ride.